Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, a day which promotes indecency, a day which promotes immorality, a day which promotes filth, which promotes corruption, which promotes fornication. Before we go on to talk about what does Islam say about such practices, what is the ruling Islamically relating to such days, first we will go into a bit of background information regarding Valentine's Day. Valentine was a man, or more specifically, like claimed by some Christians, he was a saint. He was a monk. Going back to the third century, where the emperor of Rome, he gave a ruling, he gave a judgment over his country, that from this day onwards, young unmarried men cannot get married. Why? Because they will be helpful for our country as soldiers. They will be helpful for fighting for our country. For this reason, the emperor of Rome, he made it illegal for unmarried young men to get married to women. When the so-called Saint Valentine, the monk, when he heard about such judgment of the Rome emperor, he became outraged. So in secrecy, what he used to do, he used to get young unmarried men and he used to marry them off to women in secrecy without the emperor of Rome knowing. The emperor of Rome, he found out, when he found out, he also became outraged that I have given judgment, I have given ruling. Now this so-called Saint Valentine is going against my judgment. So he ordered for him to be executed. Before he was executed, he was imprisoned. And whilst he spent some time in jail, he built a relationship with the jailer's daughter. Came the time of his execution. Just before he got executed, he wrote a letter to the jailer's daughter. And at the end of the letter, he wrote, from your Valentine. And from this, the day of 14th of February became famous. And it was from this that this practice stemmed. And Valentine's Day is a day which promotes inclination between males and females. A day which promotes so-called love. And after this practice of Saint Valentine, other baseless practices also took place in that third century. And other practices also stemmed out from there. I will not go into too much detail as time does not permit me. Now, this practice is a practice which promotes immorality, it promotes indecency, it promotes filth, it promotes fornication. And not just this practice on this day promotes this. If we look into the society that we are living in, in this Western society, this society also promotes such practices. It promotes indecency, it promotes immorality, it promotes fornication, etc., etc. Now what does Allah the Almighty mention regarding this? Allah the Almighty mentions, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ zina. Do not go close to fornication. Allah the Almighty does not mention, do not commit the act of fornication. Rather he mentions, do not even go close to fornication. Do not do anything that will take you towards the act of fornication. So Allah the Almighty is closing barriers before any consequences, before any outcome of fornication takes place. Now let's go to some prophetic narrations. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, al hayau la yati illa bi khair. Modesty only brings good. Modesty only brings good. In another narration, it is mentioned, إِذَا فَاتَكَ الْحَيَاء فَفْعَلْ مَا شِئْتَ when you lose the good quality of modesty, then do what you wish. And this is the outcome of immodesty. That when a person, he becomes immodest, then the animalistic qualities are built into him. And then we see what is prevalent in society. 
the immodesty, the immorality, the filth that is prevalent, especially amongst our youngsters. Islam is against immodesty. Islam is a religion of peace. Islam promotes modesty. Islam promotes chasteness. Islam wants the preservation of humankind. Islam wants that each and every individual in society is safeguarded. That's why it promotes modesty. Unfortunately, the society we are living in, it promotes vice versa. It promotes contrary to such teachings. And because of this, we have the outcome that we read in newspapers daily. For example, a couple of days ago, I was reading in the newspaper that there was a lady, she was sitting in the back of a taxi. The taxi driver is taking her home. Suddenly, the taxi driver stops. He locks the doors of the car. He gets into the back and he tries to fulfill his animalistic desires. Luckily, the lady who is being attacked, she was an expert in self-defense, due to which she fought herself out of the car and she was saved. So we have such cases, such scenarios taking place on a daily basis to such an extent that it was mentioned in that very same newspaper that research shows that in this society we are living in, especially in this European society, one in eight women are sexually assaulted from other than their partner. So one in eight women are sexually assaulted from other than their partner. And this is more than the global research and the worldwide research, where the worldwide research shows that one in 14 women are sexually assaulted from other than their partners. What does this show? This shows that we need to promote the teachings of modesty. If we are going to promote the teachings of immodesty, of immorality, of indecency, of filth, of fornication in our societies, then the outcome is going to be such.